It frequently appears in news that elderly individuals must pick up trash in order to survive. But in 2021, South Korea's SBS TV channel visited a rubbish house, which still surprised people. In a modest to story building, there was 150 tons of waste built up. The house is like a mound of trash from the interior to the outside. Occasionally, a rush of odor renders pedestrians who have passing unable to open their eyes. When the neighbors could take it no longer, they turn to an online program on SBS TV. They are hoping that the program staff can convince the elderly to remove this trash. Many are saddened by the narrative behind this junk house, as the show team gradually unravels its secret. Today, I'll discuss a societal phenomenon that has gained significant traction globally, but has long been disregarded by the general public. The Neat Group This old man is Choi Hong Sik, 75 years old at the time, living in a modest two-story residential building with his wife. The small building is overflowing with rubbish and has lost much of its original exquisite appearance. When they want to come out, the elderly need to get out of the window take out their shoes from the cracks of the eaves, and then tremble and slide down the garbage hill. The effects of a fall are terrible for the elderly and fragile. When the TV crew first approached the elderly, they met with a lot of resistance. After repeated persuasion by the staff, the elderly are willing to believe that they have no malicious intentions. He informed the TV crew that the items in the room were actually his treasures, rather than rubbish. The scene inside the house was worse than expected when the TV crew followed the elderly inside. Only a fissure remains after the scrap blocked the door. There is nowhere to walk because the entire house is over and with trash. The house has not been maintained for a long time. Some of the wood has been damaged. And there is a big water leak. Many exposed wires and nails were dangling from the roof. And Choi Hong Sik's 70-year-old wife usually washes clothes in rainwater dripping from the roof before drying them on the rubbish hill. The TV crew was holding their breath to film, when they heard the sound of a radio coming from the junk pile in the room. There was still someone staying in the house. It was their 40-year-old son Choi Yong Jong, who had not left the room in a year. Choi Yong Jong seems white and thick, as opposed to the two old people who are yellow and emaciated. But, because he has not been in contact with the outside world for a long time. He is unable to speak regularly with others. The words that flow from his mouth are illogical and confusing. The family eats and rests in their son's room, which already has the most open space for the entire family. Despite the fact that there is barely enough place for a small table and three crowded individuals. The majority of elderly hoarders are motivated by loneliness or poor mobility. It's unusual for a family of three to live together and accumulate waste, like Choi Hong Sik does. When the TV crew inquired about Choi Hong Sik's wife whether she wanted to live in a tidy house, everyone would desire that. The grandma replied bitterly. Then she continued coughing during the chat. The staff inquired whether she was ill. She said it was only a little cold. The TV crew transported the two old people to the hospital. With caution for a comprehensive checkup, the grandmother's health was not looking good, and her heart was full of fluid that may induce a sudden myocardial infarction at any time. Therefore she needed surgery immediately. According to doctors, it is caused by bad living conditions and a persistent lack of exercise. Choi Hong Sik and his wife got along well. So when he heard the news, he was eager to allow the TV crew help clean up the waste. At the same time, he revealed to the psychological therapy doctor the true reason for his waste hoarding. His son had not gone out to work after graduating from university, and he was loitering at home every day. Choi Hong Sik was furious and worried, but there was nothing he could do. The elderly couple has a home, but their income is modest. Choi Hong Sik was concerned that his kid would be unable to sustain himself when they died, so he picked up something that he thought was valuable every day. He reasoned that if his kid ran out of money, he might still generate money by selling scrap metal. His wife was aware of what Choi Hong Sik was thinking. Therefore she preferred to suffer in silence while feeling ill. To clean up, the TV crew enlisted the help of 226 volunteers and a cleaning service. But Choi Yong Jong was unhappy. He told the TV crew, you can clean the front yard and the bathroom. Why do you want to clean my room? 
Choi Young Jong was persuaded for a long time by the TV crew and the cleaning firm. In the end, Choi Young Jong was carried out of the garbage mountain. It took hundreds of people a whole week to clean up the 150 tons of rubbish in this small building. The elderly couple stood in their new home, tears in their eyes, thanking the TV crew. Choi Hong Sik made a deep bow to the camera, but as long as their son remains at home and does not work, the family's burden may never be disappeared. In January 2023, a 47-year-old woman who called X was arrested in South Korea in Chon. The reason for this is because she continued to falsely claim her mother's pension for two years after her mother died, totaling 14 to 16 million won. X has always lived with his mother, and she was the third oldest of six children in the family. She had no work and relied on government assistance and her mother's pension. Her mother had diabetes when she was alive. But due to financial constraints, she never received proper care. And her other children rarely returned to see her. In January 2023, the National Pension Corporation discovered that Xi's mother had no medical documents for the previous two years and sought other relatives to check her condition. Xi's younger sister came to the apartment where her elder sister and mother resided to find a skeleton wrapped in blankets. Her mother had been dead for a long time. According to Xi's diary, her mother died in August 2020. She informed the police that she did not report her mother's death because she was afraid she would no longer get her mother's pension. X is now facing allegations of attempting to conceal human remains and breaking senior welfare rules. The maximum penalty is seven years in jail. According to Statistics Korea data issued on March 30, 2021, more than half of unmarried Korean 30 to 40 year olds live with their parents and rely on them financially. In the 40 to 40 for age range, 44% of unmarried adults also live with their parents. Do you think they just remain at home and join the neat group since they don't have a job? Interestingly, 58% of unmarried 2040 for year olds who live with their parents work. Japan, which is located across the sea from South Korea, has an even more widespread neat problem. In 2020, Japanese television station NHK produced a documentary about the tragedy of 56-year-old Maki Oka Shinichi, who died of starvation at home. Maki Oka Shinichi has been disconnected from society for 30 years. Rather than the neat, there is a more apt phrase for him. Social withdrawal. The phrase social withdrawal originated in Japan and refers to persons who do not interact with others, do not attend school or work, and live completely isolated from the outside world. According to the Japanese cabinet office, a person is deemed a social retreat if they stay at home for more than six months. Compared with the neat, this group is more prominent in the state of home. They hardly leave the room and cut off any exterior interaction except from meeting basic, physical needs. They're still alive, but no sign of them can be discovered in society. And Maki Oka Shinichi is one of them. Shinichi has been surviving off his parents' wealth since their deaths more than 10 years ago. Kind-hearted neighbors once reminded community workers that if this continued, he would die. When NHK TV initially accompanied the team to Shinichi's residence, they discovered that Shinichi's communication skills were essentially non-existent, owing to the extended period of isolation from the outside world. In the face of the staff's help, Shinichi just repeated, It's okay. Can you give me some time? Despite the fact that there was no water or power at home, and Shinichi appeared to be in poor health, the staff could not forcefully remove him. When an HKTV crew returned to the residence 10 days later, they discovered Shinichi dead at home. The cause of his death was severe malnutrition or being starved to death alive. Shinichi has a younger brother, Makita Okajiro, who works as a full-time taxi driver. Jiro moved out of the house and ceased visiting his brother when his parents died. The authorities instructed Jiro to gather Shinichi's artifacts. He saw an abundance of snack packets heaped up in his home, with no sign of fresh food. In other words, Shinichi may not have had a proper supper after his parents died. He survived on a variety of fast food every day, and his parents' bequest totaled just 8,477 yen, or $63. 
Ji Ro discovered a diary among the antiquities. This diary exposed the truth about Shinichi's life. Shinichi's room is decorated with family photos. And he used to be a diligent worker when he was younger. He used to be a book salesperson. And he would meticulously record client information in a book for his performance. He would support his family and take his parents on a trip when he was paid. Shinichi took the civil service examination in order to acquire a secure work. And subsequently became a full member of a medical firm. Nonetheless, he is in for an endless amount of overtime fatigue and stress. His body was likewise fatigued and he was unable to continue working. He once wrote in his notebook that life was so monotonous. Without a healthy physique that his thoughts was blank. Without work and health, Shinichi isolated himself in his room and did not communicate with his family. Jiro also found his father's diary. His father has always been concerned about Shinichi's situation. He once wrote in his diary that Shinichi had stopped eating with them recently. And that he was worried about not being able to find work. Yet, his parents couldn't help but blame Shinichi. Who has not he been going out to work? Once, his father wrote this in his diary. I had another argument with Shinichi after dinner. I knew he didn't want to talk about job searching. But I inadvertently brought it up. As I realized it was my son. I burst into tears. Another time, the father wrote, Today, I couldn't help striking Shinichi. And his mouth is bleeding. When his parents grew older, his mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And his father was diagnosed with terminal cancer. His father's diary concludes, Parents cause tragedy. Thus the kid must bear the affliction. Is this the meaning of their birth in this world? Maida Yoshihisa, who is in his 70s, is known as the originator of NEAT in Japan. In 2016, his story was filmed on the Japanese reality show. May I come to your house with you? This reality program focuses on interviewing random folks on the road who missed the final train. In exchange for a visit to their house, the TV crew pays a cab fee. One day, Yoshihisa became the target of the TV crew. And he readily agreed to shoot. Yoshihisa lives in Tokyo Shibai A Yoyoji, which is known as a wealthy district. In 2018, the average housing price increased to 3.60 to million yen per square meter, or about to $6815. But, when the TV crew entered Yoshihisa S residence, they were stunned. It has three bedrooms and a courtyard. Yet, like the numerous neat S, Yoshihisa has used his great authority to turn his house into a rubbish waste. Newspapers were stacked up in front of the entrance. Boxed lunches and food were scattered all over the house. Yoshihisa was asked where he slept at night by the TV crew. He pointed to a random rubbish pile and stated, Sleep anywhere you like. The house is not equipped with air conditioning. Yoshihisa took some water from the tap and sprinkled it over his neck to keep it cool during the hot summer months. Then the TV crew observed a dish of sheet-like material. Yoshihisa told them that it was orange peel. He would scrub his hands with orange peel to avoid smelling nasty. In order to save money, Yoshihisa ate natta and onions for three meals a day. Mix in the dressing with a heaping spoonful of rice. According to him, he never gets tired of eating these. As a result, he was thereafter lovingly referred to as the Nat to Ferry by netizens. When the TV crew asked about his past, Yoshihisa began to talk eloquently. His family was wealthy. His grandfather graduated from Aoyama College. His father was an engineer who studied explosives during the war and then handled business, saving the family money. In the 1950s, Yoshihisa's parents shot numerous treasured images of his boyhood using a camera. He had a sister as well. And his family was extremely happy. He attended the Tokyo Metropolitan University affiliated middle school in high school. A prestigious school with a high rate of advancement. Nonetheless, he was repeatedly denied admission to university. And suffered a lot of negative comments and criticism as a result. He still had problems at work. So he turned to drink to numb himself. Later, he acquired liver illness as a result of his liver being overburdened. Yoshihisa simply used the excuse of recuperating from illness to become a neat. Any way his parents could afford him. Despite the fact that he had only worked for two years of his life. 
His lengthy life of isolation has left him without a girlfriend or close friends. And the only people who care about him are his family. But aging is unavoidable. After his parents died, his sister died at the age of 60. Despite his parents' bequest of tens of millions of yen, the money did not alleviate his feelings of loneliness and emptiness. The TV crew asked Yoshihisa, how many more years of his parents' estate are available? Yoshihisa said with a smile, it has only been seven or eight years at the present expense of living. Even if the money ran out, his father's land could be sold. But he didn't want to do that. If he was still alive after seven or eight years, he had already prepared to commit suicide. Yoshihisa even questioned the TV crew. Do you believe life is still meaningful? If everyone you knew has died. In the winter of 2017, the TV crew returned to visit Yoshihisa. This time it was to assist him in cleaning up his mansion. After a long day of work, they cleared out almost 700 kilograms of garbage. This Nata fairy appeared to understand as well. And he swore to live nicely and cleanly. On June 30th, 2020, two years and seven months later, the TV crew returned to Yoshihisa's house. So, did he keep his promises? The answer is obvious. The plants in front of the door have grown up. And the mansion is slowly turning back into a garbage dump. According to him, he immediately became an internet star in Japan after the episode aired. He was invited to appear on a variety program. And fans paid him visits at his house on occasion. Yoshihisa was very happy. The TV crew visited Yoshihisa's home for the fourth time in early 2022. More garbage could be seen with the naked eye. The TV crew gave him paper and pen and asked him to jot down his goals for the year. He wrote down the words. Live easily. When they inquired about his health, Yoshihisa smiled and replied that he was well and could eat more bowls of gnat too. It appears that the gnat to fairy story is still not over. But the Kumazi Awa family is far more miserable than Yoshihisa. Kumazi Awa Ichiro, born in 1975, was from a wealthy family. His grandfather was a well-known Tokyo dentist. His father, Kumazi Awa Hideaki, served as Japan's Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. He graduated from the University of Tokyo's Faculty of Law, which is renowned as the cradle of Japanese politicians. He also spent two years at Cambridge University studying. His mother was born into a textile plutocracy. In his middle age, his father serving as director of the Cattle Bureau, director of the Economic Affairs Bureau, and a reviewer for the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries before rising to the post of Vice Minister of Affairs. Unfortunately, man cow disease popped out in Japan in 2001. Hideaki was obliged to resign since the outbreak had gone on for far too long. Yet, three years later, at the age of 61, he was appointed as Japan's ambassador to the Czech Republic. In a few years, Hideaki retired and departed the officialdom entirely. After that, he used his handsome pension to buy a small two-story building in Tokyo near Maku, and planned to spend his golden years with his wife. However, what he never expected was that the 44-year-old eldest son Kamazi Awa Ichiro became the one who made him helpless. Ichiro has been told by his mother since he was a child that the most essential thing is to learn. Anything else can wait. Ichiro was enrolled to a middle school at the age of 12 where a big percentage of pupils were admitted to the University of Tokyo. His grades remained top once he entered middle school, but he had significant social deficiencies and low emotional intelligence. Ichiro was subsequently diagnosed with Asperger S syndrome, a condition characterized by social problems, self-centeredness, a lack of empathy, and a difficulty to tolerate differing points of view from others. Eventually, Ichiro became isolated by classmates, even bullied. And when he returned home, he vented his rage on his mother. As an adult, Aichiro once left such a message on social media. My mom would be my first target if I had a license to kill. He also mentioned that his parents were particularly difficult with his education. Breaking his toys and models every time he failed an exam, he couldn't compete with them until his freshman year of high school. And this dread has always enveloped him giving rise to his warped personality. 
Eiichiro did not attend the University of Tokyo after graduating from high school, as his parents had intended, but instead attended an animation academy for advanced study. Nonetheless, he dropped out of school for a variety of reasons. Eiichiro attended Ryutsukize University's graduate school and obtained his master's degree, with the help of his father. However, after graduation, Eiichiro did not appear to be interested in seeking work. Hideaki had no choice but to find job for Eiichiro at a relative's hospital. But because Eiichiro had numerous disagreements with his supervisor, and once threatened to murder him, he lost his job. During this period, Eiichiro's violence escalated. He had a younger sister who was discussing marriage with her fiancé at the time. But the man's family cancelled the marriage due to Eiichiro's unusual statements and conduct. When his sister approached Eiichiro to discuss the matter, she was punched and kicked by him. Shortly after, his sister committed suicide, and his mother suffered from depression as a result of a chain reaction. At this time, Hideaki no longer expected Ichiro to achieve anything in his profession, but only he quit causing trouble. Hideaki let Ichiro live in his house in Tokyo Mijiro, and used the rent for the nearby apartment and parking lot as his monthly living expenses, which totaled around 800,000 yen. Ichiro is untidy and has never taken out the rubbish in his life, and he quickly became a guy despised by his neighbors. This way of life lasted until May of 2019. At that time, Eiichiro who was 44 years old did not know how to separate garbage and was repeatedly complained by his neighbors. In desperation, Mr. and Mrs. Kamaziawa brought their son back to live with them at their house. On May 28, 2019, Hideaki told Eiichiro to pick up the trash, but was unexpectedly beaten by him. The old Hideaki couldn't take it any longer and dashed out of the courtyard. Eiichiro yelled at his mother. Tell him to get down on his knees, and apologize to me if he wants to come home. That night, the 76-year-old father went home in tears and knelt down to his son. The elderly couple was too terrified to descend from the second story in the days that followed. On the morning of June 1, 2019, the elementary school next Eiichiro's door held a sports meeting. The sounds irritated Eiichiro. He shouted at the window that he was going to kill the students. This reminded Hideaki of a scenario that occurred only a few days earlier in Kawasaki. He was concerned that his son will become the next serial killer and injure innocent people. At 3 o'clock p.m., Hideaki and Eiichiro quarreled again. When Eiichiro swung his fist at Hideaki, he did not dodge this time. Perhaps he has accumulated too much dread and tension over the years. Perhaps he was afraid that Eiichiro would exact vengeance on society. Hideaki his son 37 times in the body. He got up and walked to his bedroom to change into a clean suit, then took up the phone and contacted the police to surrender himself in. Finally, the Tokyo court was kind to Hideaki and sentenced him to six years in jail. These cases caused a sensation in Japan, prompting a rethinking of the topic of neat and social seclusion. The Japanese cabinet office conducted two surveys on social disengagement among people aged 15 to 39. In 2010, there were 696,000 persons counted. And in 2015, there were 541,000. Some experts point out that the cabinet office ignores the fact that persons over the age of 40 constitute the majority of the social withdrawal category. If include them, the total number of social disengagement groups in Japan exceeds 1 million. They are unable to integrate into society, have no financial income, and must rely on their parents for support. The societal issues they cause are referred to as the 80-50 problem, that is 80-year-old parents supporting 50-year-old children. If Aichi Ross tragedy had not happened, he would have been 50 in 6 years. The neat problem is a consequence of the three aspects of person, family, and society, and it will not be fixed immediately, but it is encroaching on our entire society. If you have the option, I believe no one wants to live in a few square meters of space. Don't forget to tell me what you think about this case in the comments. And please like and subscribe to keep up with the Asian disturbing crimes.